Hello, it's now 3am and I'm sitting in our kitchen in my pyjamas. I only slept for a couple of hours, then woke up and couldn't sleep anymore, even though I'm still very tired. Last night I had to take a pill of dexamethasone, this is cortisone, which basically makes you feel like you've drunk a whole lot of caffeine. Once the effect wears off, the fatigue will hit you like a hammer. In a couple of hours I'm going to have the second part of my fourth chemo, and for the first time I'm really dreading it. I'm not at all looking forward to yet another round of fatigue, pain, discomfort and all sorts of physical issues. All of this is making me feel like someone who's drowning. Every time the chemo drags me into the deep, while from time to time I'm allowed to come to the surface, just long enough to catch my breath. Then the cycle repeats. It seems endless. But let me introduce myself. My name's Muriel. I'm 59, married to Anton, no kids, I live on the outskirts of a small town in the beautiful Flemish Ardennes in Belgium and I've been working as an English teacher in adult education for some 34 years. I'm a huge cat lover and a vegetarian. One of my hobbies is making animation movies, although I haven't been able to pursue this interest lately. In March of this year, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and in this video I want to tell you more about the emotional roller coaster this has proved to be so far. It took me some time to decide to go public with my journey but I finally decided to do so for a number of reasons. First I want to inform other women about this little known disease which is often called a silent killer due to the fact that it's often discovered at the later stages when treatment is much harder. Secondly, I have found that other YouTube testimonies by fellow cancer patients have been a great help to me and I would like to offer similar information and support specifically to ovarian cancer patients. And finally, I also wanted to document my journey for myself my family and friends. Emotions can be hard to deal with and there are a lot of them when you've been diagnosed with a potentially life-threatening disease. The treatment is a roller coaster of side effects and feelings in its own right. If you're a partner of a cancer patient, your life will also be affected in many ways and I hope this series will offer you some support. Friends and co-workers may find it hard to know how to react. Perhaps they will find some answers here as well. Hello, it's now about 7.30 and we're en route to the hospital for my second uh, chemo of the fourth round. It's a beautiful day, but unfortunately I won't be able to enjoy it. I just wanted to explain about this little cushion that I've got on my safety belt. It was offered to me by the hospital uh, because I have a port. Um, if I could show you, this is my port. It's now uh, hidden by plaster because I've applied some um, ointment, some cream uh, that numbs the port so that when it is accessed, it won't hurt. Hello again. It's still very early. I'm now walking towards the hospital. Like I said, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get any footage uh, inside because uh, they don't allow filming other people, which I totally understand. Hello, I'm in my room now and I have a one person room so I'm lucky I can drop my mask. Um, just wanted to show you my outfit for the day. A warm jacket because it was quite uh, cool this morning. 
a long sleeve t-shirt because I'm always cold in here with the air conditioning on um, and my hat which I'll probably take off in the course of the day um, if I get a bit warmer so yeah this is uh, the room I have my bed obviously um, the pump for the chemos here and I have a nice view over the car park and the surrounding landscape which I'll try and show you if I can so this is the view from my room uh, over the car park I'll try and show you what I've got in my bag first of all my trusty iPad that I use for virtually anything uh, vlogging among other things got my headphones which I probably won't need since I have a room on my own my food uh, in a cooling bag so this is both my uh, lunch and some snacks when I'm hungry uh, hankies and an extension cord for my iPad and then I've got my phone of course and that's about it hello again it's now 20 to 9 and meanwhile the nurse has been and the dietitian's been I actually weighed a little bit more than uh, during the week um, even a kilo so I think it's probably due to the dexamethasone I took um, the nurse has um, accessed my port and actually I wanted uh, to talk to you about my port a little bit more um, it's covered by a plaster at the moment you can see it uh, here so here's my port um, in Belgium it's customary uh, to um, give patients who need um, chemo a port um, I know this isn't customary in some other countries but I'm very happy with it and if you have the chance to get one I would definitely advise you do so um, one of the arguments doctors sometimes use uh, not to do it is that a port may get infected but I'm not worried about that at all because the nurses here are all specially trained everything is sterile and they know what they're doing um, the port was inserted under general anesthesia I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a different video um, chemo brain I'm lost for words I'm also very very tired today um, so I was talking about the port and um, why I'm, I'm happy that I've got it it's very comfortable um, the nurse can draw blood um, every week um, my blood has to be tested to see if my neutrophils and blood platelets are good enough to get the chemo um, so far I've had three occasions when um, either the white blood cells or the platelets were way too bad and I couldn't get the chemo so we'll see what it's uh, like today I do have a lot of bruising on my arms and legs uh, without actually hurting myself so my guess is my blood platelets are still um, out of whack but we'll see but we were talking about the port um, and why it's so comfortable so um, actually if you have a port um, the chemo goes straight into a large vein close to your heart which is why um, if it should get infected it can be really dangerous 
but like I said I'm not worried about that um, if you don't have a port nurses have to access a vein in your arm which can be quite painful I've heard um, because the veins there are much smaller um, in some countries people get um, a kind of permanent uh, access in their arms um, but this doesn't look very comfortable to me either because whenever you want to have a shower um, you have to cover it up and it may also get infected uh, whereas with a port you can just do anything if you want to go for a swim it's fine uh, you can shower all you like so I'm really happy with my port something else I wanted to show you because it's really handy are these socks they're yoga socks and they've got these little dots on the bottom which are very handy because I can actually lie in bed with them they keep my feet warm but also um, I can walk around in them um, on the slippery floor here because it's tiled floor and um, I won't slip so really handy if you can find them it's now quarter past 10 and I've been released from hospital because my white blood cell count is off again. Um, white blood cells should be over a thousand and mine are about 900. So no chemo this week, yay! To be honest, I'm really relieved and um, my husband and I are going for a bike ride and we're going to have lunch at a nice little pavement cafe and enjoy the weekend and then hopefully next week I'll feel a lot better. The only thing I feel sorry about is that I had another total of eight milligrams of dexamethasone which also causes me quite a few side effects but yeah <laughs>